introduction. <laughs> How can I possibly live up to that? Well, parents, relatives, and friends of the grad class, colleagues in the audience, honored platform guests, and administrators, and certainly graduates of 2011, I have to say that I am proud to be considered a grad by the class of 2011. <laughs> In fact, I am proud to be associated with them in any way possible. It's an incredible assembly of souls that you have before you now. If I seem nervous, it's only because I am. <laughs> if I don't, I'm doing a good job of fooling you so far. These, uh, these fine citizens of VRHS were still in grade 11 when they began to say that uh, I was the candidate that they wanted to honor. My first response was, no way. <laughs> Inwardly, I was cringing at the enormity of finding something of deep significance to say. Summer of 2.10 came, and I thought, good, they'll forget. <laughs> Fall of 2.10 proved me wrong. They came, I came, to the realization that I was dealing with a persistent, intelligent, cagey, and beguiling group. <laughs> I was pelted with polite persistence. I was served vast expressions of confidence in my ability. <laughs> and finally, the most insidious manner, they proceeded to set good examples for me. <laughs> you know, there were funds raised for the poor, outreach programs for the old, funds were raised to bring water to the third world, all indicators of a maturing group of young individuals. I felt it necessary to respond to their request. At this time, I think it's appropriate for me to turn and, and address the class because it is actually for them. So, excuse me. So, uh, what can I say? Seems like you already know it all. <laughs> you know, from all that we've heard, from all that you've done, I'm concerned about your happiness. I always have been, you know, laughing is being a big thing between us and it's been a good way to break the ice. And education seems so focused on achievement that happiness seems to slip a few rungs down the ladder. Success without happiness is shallow. But you can be happy with your possessions, but your possessions can't make you happy. So I've got thinking and uh, we live in a culture that expects you to achieve, to become successful. But there are some things in our culture that are going to help us through. And if you look at culture like a fabric, within the strands of the fabric, there are things that reach out to us. And I'd like to list a few. I know the list won't be complete, but it'll be long enough. So uh, we're looking at theater, art, literature, music, fashion, technology, philosophy, and religion. And along these strands, people can pass ideas on to other members of their culture. So from these ideas, we can build a, our own personal philosophy of happiness. Theater, theater is the oldest form of communication. Imagine if you can, a Stone Age mind enacting a story. <laughs> You're probably thinking of me, aren't you? <laughs> a Stone Age lion enacting a story for his clan that makes them laugh. And laughter is the beginning of happiness. Mostly an expression of happiness. And yes, no matter what you think, it does make you look better. Literacy was for many years the supreme passing, the supreme way to pass on ideas. In a short form, they became known as sayings. For those interested, these sayings provided words to live by, and I want to share with you now some of my words to live by. Saying number one on my list would also qualify for one of our school improvement goals, because it's a mathematical formula for happiness. Life is 10% what you make it, and 90% how you take it. There are so many things unforeseen 
in life that can derail the best laid plans and ambitions of mankind. There are many distant lines of force in the global economy. It may or it may not be true that a butterfly beating its wings in Beijing can actually cause a tornado in Texas. But I can assure you that a tsunami in Japan can cause layoffs in Toronto. <laughs> a brilliant invention can make your job obsolete. A microscopic germ can wreak havoc with your health. And maybe you're just having a bad day. Well, you have a far better chance of changing the way you think than you have of stopping something that's already in way, already underway. It takes time and effort to imprint this idea on your psyche, but it is worth it. So now, my friends, maybe you can understand that the humor for which I am known for, or renowned, even for those who don't find me funny, <laughs> that this is my coping mechanism. This is my 90%. This is what I work on. The next thing is, is more of a corollary to number one. And it goes like this, if you work hard enough on number one, then the obstacles in your life are going to become your life. Now this may be cliche, but if you can have fun while you're washing the dishes, mowing the lawn, and cleaning up your mess, then you're well on your way to happiness. <laughs> I have mis misplaced my next line. <laughs> <laughs> Just in a rush to finish, I guess. I told you I'd be short. Okay. One of the greatest writings to emerge during my time as a young adult was a poem. And it was listed as author unknown and had its writing date confused with the construction of a church. And for a young man that started university at the dawn of the 70s, a poem written on the eve of the 17th century had a certain magical allure, and I'd like to read some of it for you. The Desiderata, loosely translated as things to be desired, starts with, go placidly among the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence, as far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to the others. Even the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter. For always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let not this blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and the world is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially, do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt, the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful and strive to be happy. Yes, you have a right to be here, and a right to be happy, and this poem should be hung on as many walls as possible. When I found out that the Desiderata was written by Max Berman in the 1920s, likely, it did not change either the beauty or the truth that it held for me. 
In the dining room wall in my house, my wife has this list of sayings hung. Love as though you've never been hurt. Dance as though nobody is watching. Sing as though no one is listening. And live as though heaven is on earth. Do these things and you're well on your way. Finally, music is another happiness helper. To someone like me who cannot, it seems that making music is like making happiness. In the 70s, the fifth dimension sang, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligned with Mars, then peace will rule the planets and love will steer the stars. It is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Well, I hope it doesn't take a celestial event and a celestial alignment to make you happy. I will leave you with these two lines from the songs of long-lived artists. Bruce Springsteen sang, You were born to run. But a grizzled veteran Canadian songsmith named Neil Young sang, Long may you run. And that is my wish for you grads of 2011. Long may you run.